What's up, people? Yesterday was uh, February 2nd. I mean, February 22nd, 2022. And, you know, that is basically a day that we will never see again in history. So, me and my significant daughter was around just, you know, around the house doing some housework. And I was just working on my normal um, business things. But we decided to actually get up and go experience the city and do something that's spontaneous for us. But, and since it's been Mardi Gras and where we live at, it's Mardi Gras right now, we thought what was best then to actually go experience what the Mardi Gras culture has to offer. See myself, I have experience let me turn on this light. It's very, got dark in there very quick, ain't it? See, me and myself. See, me, myself, I have experienced Mardi Gras since I was, since I was a child. I really, that's like, I've been experiencing Mardi Gras. But all I knew was the bands, you know, for schools and or uh, moon pie beads and things like that. These was I was thought was the cultural experience of what Mardi Gras was. But I found to realize yesterday that it got a lot of culture to Mardi Gras, more than what I wanted to give to it. But in this video right here, you see that that was the Mobile Carnival Museum. They call it Carnival Mardi Gras. And I always knew that Mobile was the actual capital of Louisiana during the, before the Louisiana Purchase. Mobile, Alabama was the, cassette, was the capital. So, there was a lot of French and Creole people in this area. And basically, all I want to say is that Mardi Gras originated right here in the city. Now, I know across the world, over the world, they really sell New Orleans as Mardi Gras capital. But if you didn't know, now you know. It originated in Mobile, Alabama. Now, New Orleans, we'll give y'all jazz, but we can't give y'all Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras belongs to us. Just a Mobile thing. You may not never understand what that feel like. Okay, so we was heading downtown. There's a cannon that is placed on a fork in the road on Government Street right there. Now, this cannon was a cannon that was used to defend Fort Morgan during the Civil War. But now... The local high schools, basically McGill and Murphy, painted every year for a football game that they call the Battle of the Cannon. And the victor get to paint the cannon. Every year they have this football game, so every year this, this cannon get another coat of paint. That cannon. That cannon is placed on Government Street. It basically separates, put a fork in the road between government and airport boulevard along government down the line of government there's beautiful beautiful oak trees that it's worth seeing it one day if you ever get a chance to come down here it worth just driving down government street and just observing what it has to offer it's a lot of beauty and a lot of historic things these beautiful oak trees drape over Government Street. They have a lot of historic value to them. Some of them are forbidden even to chop down. They're considered statewide landmarks. It's a park with a fountain in it and has statues from the early 1400s. Early 1400s all the way to the late 1800s. 
there's statues that of people that lived back in those days that I had no idea. So I decided to stop by this park and, you know, go uh, actually observe these statues. I've been living in this city my whole life, really, but I never observed these statues. So I took it upon myself to actually stop and film the statues and actually read who lived in this city well before I was even thought about. And me and Mo, we just made it like a date. You know, we just made it into like a little, a day date and went down and just experienced some culture of Mobile, Alabama. Take a look. Some of these buildings was here before we was even thought about being born. Major history. About to go visit the Mardi Gras Museum in Mobile, Alabama. You see what this talk about. Be back with y'all in a second. Yes, ma'am. Good jacket. I like your jacket. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm cheesehead. <laughs> yes, sir. I said, I like your jacket. I'm a Green Bay fan myself. Uh, we live 20 miles south of Miami Fields. So. Okay. I know it. That last loss hurt your heart. Thank you, Will. It hurt me. Party and Star recording the theater out of the guys. Yes, sir. Oh, you got real history, Will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Already speaking with those people. 
her guide and tool used to last an hour or hour. After receiving our instructions from the nice employee, we was well on our way. We had got our pamphlet, got the number to call to get the information for each exhibit. So we headed out. One day, man, I gotta start getting out and see the city that I live in.
throw me some beans. Mom, Pam, Mom, Pam. This is mine, this is mine right here. Pritch Parade, Chicken Saw Parade, Motherfucker Sarah Van Parade, Chris be all over. Upside down, bro. Mm -hmm. And one thing I can actually say, when we leak, when we and my baby end up, when we actually get out there, like, we actually have a good time. We actually have a great time with each other. And this is not like no puppy love or something that, Bruh, never believe that we had over 10 years in, over a 10 year connection with each other. So, we actually have a good time. Just like that, it was all, at least we thought it was, until we walked out and looked to our left and saw this huge stage. Now you can't have a huge stage and let two goofballs see it. We had to go walk up there, not knowing if they were going to let us or not, but we had to try, so we tried.
be the newspaper place. That was that was Mobile Press Register right there. Come on. Right there. The old one before it's on Water Street. Mm -hmm. Where is It's way bigger than what it looked like on the outside though. Need to come experience this if you ain't never done it. I might teach you something.